Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I always enjoy bringing you new tips on organizing, upcycles, crafts, DIYs, and today I am bringing you a viewer choice, which was this flip calendar. I'm still going to be able to show you four different ways to make this project. And what I always love about DIYs is that you can do it however it fits your style and your decor. So let's get started. So I brought you a couple of different variations of this. I was very limited on my supplies. I think I've run out <laughs> of things to use. Um, and I am still trying to stay at home, so I had a little bit of a hard time finding the supplies I would have liked to use for this. So please forgive some of the examples that I'm giving because I'm talking about them and not necessarily showing you. But I'm still gonna be able to show you four different ways to make this project. And what I always love about DIYs is that you can do it however it fits your style and your decor. So let's get started. So as you know, if you voted for this, this was the inspiration for this flip calendar. And as much as I would have loved to have had a rustic look like this, I just didn't have any of those supplies. So to make this simple on myself, I just printed these out on photo paper. It's like a cardstock, but you can cut this out of chipboard. You can put it onto cardboard. You could scrapbook these, but I was keeping it simple. So I just printed out the seven days of the week, the 12 months, then I did a series of numbers that were blank through three and then one through zero. So this will cover, you know, the first of the month all the way through the 31st. Once I had all of that printed out, I went ahead and started cutting all of these. And this literally was the most time consuming part. So I'm not going to bore you by watching all of the cutting process, but suffice to say, I just measured and cut accordingly so that they were all the same size. Now, if you're printing these on your computer, you can do just one through 31 if you don't want to have each individual number separate. And I think if I were to redo this, that's what I would do. But here's a preview. So I've got Monday through Friday. And then on the numerical section, Again, that first one should be four numbers. So it should be zero or a blank one through three so that we cover all those days. And then the next section would be one through zero. And then of course you have the months. So this would be how it looks once we put it together. So let's talk about some ways to attach your calendar now that you've got them all printed out. There are the round binder clips. There are these magnetic clips that um, you can still glue on, but I like these because they're pretty heavy and they came from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to be showing you a way to use these shower hooks. So here's three quick options, but I am using foam core first for this example. And I measured the paper because theoretically, since my four sections from this were smaller, I thought this would be big enough. In retrospect, I wish I had cut this foam core larger because the little tags are tight on there. And I think half the charm of this flip calendar is seeing whatever is behind it. So I just use my X-Acto knife and I cut it out into an eight and a half by 11 piece. Once I was done cutting that, I took off the little extra piece of foam core so that I had another rectangle. And then out of the remaining rectangle piece, I cut two skinny rectangles that will effectively become the stand for the eight and a half by 11 piece that I had. And the reason I want a double piece here is just so it has a little bit more substance to attach to once we stand it up. And then I went on to the next step, which was covering that eight and a half by 11 piece of foam core. So I got out my handy dandy spray mount. You guys know I love this. And I sprayed the foam core and then the paper. And then I just placed the foam core on top of the paper upside down. And I did this so that I could make sure I'm centering it. And this way I have overhang to fold over. So I'm just cutting off the diagonal corners on these. So when I fold it, it has a nice mitered edge and all four sides of this are covered. 
After I fold them over, I take a little piece of tape just to adhere them on, but you could use wrapping paper, and I always say this, wrapping paper, scrapbook paper, you can paint it, you can use contact paper, whatever you want, and that's why it's so much fun is I get to see all of the different variations and takes on this project. So I'm going to get it all covered, and then I'm going to go ahead and just run a bead of hot to my base, and that way I can now make a stand for this. I used a ruler just to make sure that it was spaced evenly from front to back. And then I had a third scrap that I just attached to the bottom against the eight and a half by 11. And that way it just helps stabilize it a little bit more and gives it just the slightest angle so that once you put whatever it is you're using your days month and week on there, it won't fall forward. Now that I have that all done, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it could look like. This is the clips. And again, if you have these metal clips, you could just make a cute piece of scrapbook paper and attach that to say a refrigerator or a magnetic board and use these clips to make your calendar. So let your imagination go wild, you guys, but this is what it would look like with the clips. And you could see why I wish it was a little bit wider, but live and learn. Now, this is a really expensive idea, and I'll bet you you've got something like this lying around right now. So get a rectangular box, and this could be tall or lengthwise, but I made it lengthwise, and I cut half of the lid off, and then I just folded the inside so that I'm basically making a little triangle, a little purse clutch almost, if you will. And I taped down the lid, and now this becomes a little triangular stand on its own. And again, I didn't go through the whole task of covering this, but you could see how you could attach your days of the week, your month, and your calendar to that. But here I'm going to show you how to use the shower curtain. So I'm so sorry I got excited with my crocodile and I started punching the holes in the top. So, and I didn't realize I was out of frame, but use a large hole punch and just put the three or four holes in, depending upon if you're using three or four calendar tiles. And the shower curtain has a small part on it that can just slide perfectly into that three hole punch. So hopefully you can see there's a skinny little part here and it literally is the perfect fit to go into a standard hole punch size. So now that I have those on and again, any size box you want. So you could do this on a really large scale and it would look super cute. This last one is a piece of pressed board. So this is a little bit sturdier. And I am gonna go ahead and cover this one because it is going to be the board that I display in my office. So I'm cutting down the contact paper that already matches what I have in here. And I'm repeating the same steps that I did with my scrapbook paper. So once I peel off the back, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pressed board on top of the contact paper so that I know it's centered so that when I start wrapping it around, all of the sides will be covered. So I'll cut off the corners again so I get that pretty mitered edge. And now I could just start pulling the edges so that this will be pretty from all angles except the back. But if I really wanted to, I could just take another piece and cover the back side. Now I had pre-drilled holes into this. You could see all my little marks on there. So with an X-Acto knife, I just pierced where the binder clip was going to go, and then I started feeding it through. So this part is a little bit, you have to play with it. What I did was I lined up my papers onto the board, spread them out, measured it to make sure everything was even, and then made my marks for where the holes were going to be drilled for the little binder kit clips. I did discover that the lower down you go, the harder it is to flip. So again, this is where live and learn. I would go about half an inch from your top so that you have plenty of room to flip it over. So here you'll see mine are a little bit tight, but they do flip over. And I did have a little wooden base on here, which I didn't show in the video either. But right now I'm just showing you how it flips, but it does stand up. And I think this is actually really cute. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. 
I'd love to find some sort of a chipboard tag, but I'll have to wait until we get to go shopping again. I cannot wait to get out of the house and go shopping, you guys. <laughs> so now that I've shown you this one, I have one more little example to make for you. So here is just a small one inch three ring binder, and you can just print a full sheet of paper with the full date. Now, I think the Dollar Tree does sell little mini binders, so you could print two calendar dates on a page and cut them in half to save on paper. But you guys, watch. By just standing it inside out, it will act as a display all on its own. And the three ring binder itself is where you can flip the days over. So you could just take it, fold it and put it away. But when you want your calendar back out, flip it inside out and you could just flip your days as you go through the year. So you've got your binder option. You have the pressed board option. You have the silly cardboard op option, but I think covered it would be super cute. And then you have the foam core option. So hopefully one of these sparks an idea for you. Here's one more option, and that is taking one of the simple squared frames. And again, you can use the clips, but I also found this one online and I thought it was super cute by using those binder clips and just resting it on the frame. What do you think? I think there's so many great ideas here. There's so many variations that you can do. I know that you guys are so crazy talented that you're going to give me all kinds of ideas back. So I'm really happy with it. I'll be interested to see what you guys think. Uh, with this, I'm going to be putting it somewhere else because the two backgrounds blend together. But I think it is super cute. And it didn't take any money except these little binders, which I got at the dollar store. And I spent a dollar on the shower rings. And I also spent a dollar on those little clippies. And then a dollar for the foam core. So I'd already had this press board around, but I was already thinking as I was doing this, this would be so cute on one of my, say it with me, cabinet doors that I have. So I think I'm going to do one more with my cabinet door and see what you guys think. And I'll post that to my Facebook page. So if you haven't checked that out already, go into the description area below and click on that Facebook page. We're posting things all of the time. And it's been a lot of fun because I'm really getting to chat with you guys a lot more on there. So please make sure you hit subscribe. That tells YouTube what kind of videos you like. And it also tells them that the work I'm doing is valuable to you. So also leave me the comment, click like, and I will see you guys in two days. Bye.